Hi, and welcome to the Hillbilly Chicken Ranch. Welcome to our home. We're going to give you a little devotional today that the Lord led me to. The devotional uh, was part of the text in a recent Sunday school lesson, but the Holy Spirit really pressed upon me that I needed to talk about this subject, and it is a very deep subject. Uh, it may be offensive to some. I hope that you will take to heart that this is coming from my heart and from the Lord and from his word. Uh, the scripture today will be out of Ezekiel 23, verses 36 through 39. I will re be reading out of the King James Version. And you may pause the video right now before we get into the lesson and go grab your Bible. Now, in verse 36, the Lord said, Moreover, Unto me, son of man, wilt thou judge Ahola and Aholabah, yea, declare unto them their abominations, that they have committed adultery, and the blood of, is in their hands, and with their idols they have committed adultery, and have also caused their sons, whom they bear unto me, to pass for them through the fire to devour them. Moreover, this they have done unto me. They have defiled my sanctuary in the same day and have profaned my Sabbaths. For when they have slain their children to their idols, then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it. And lo, thus they have done in the midst of mine house. Early in the chapter, we learn who these two sisters represented. Ahola represented Samaria, or the nation of Israel. And Aholabah represented Jerusalem, or the nation of Judah. The Hebrew people were God's chosen people, and to this day, they still are his chosen. But God had to deal with the sinfulness of his people. Now, we can look at our own nation, the United States of America, and see the parallel. America was founded upon Judeo-Christian values. Its very beginnings were people escaping to America for religious freedoms. As the nation was formed, it was upon the scriptural understanding of how God formed Israel and his chosen. America had a role to play in Israel becoming a nation in 1948. God had a purpose for us being formed. But America, like Israel, would wane from God and his word over time. We have free will, after all. America has done some atrocious things over the years. Our biggest sin to date just may be abortions. You see that Israel also had a great sin to face. They had committed a great sin against God, and their own children were being sacrificed to false gods. Then they would dare to come into God's holy temple. Now, I do believe that abortion is serving Satan. Over the course of history, we have plenty of evidence to, to support my statement. These two sisters were lust-filled, self-serving, and selfish in their decisions. It was all about pleasure without the responsibility that went along with their actions. In this chapter, God called it whoredoms. They had committed many sins, each sin building one upon the other. And they participated in killing their offspring. They sacrificed them to false gods. Then, entering God's holy temple, they defiled it. We today, as a nation, are also guilty of such sins. This year is the year 2022. Roe v. Wade was created in 1973 when the U.S. Supreme Court made their decision. 
This ruling is now 49 years old. Over 62 million babies have been aborted. That is 62 million lives that have been snuffed out because women did not want to take the responsibility of their own actions. 62 million babies that were sacrificed to Satan. And it was done on our watch. And it's as if abortion is not bad enough, now they harvest body parts and sell them. Many of these abortions were botched and left the baby alive to die on a cold table or in a bucket. Body parts have been harvested from some of these living babies. It is horrifying to know, yet we go about our days unfazed by the horror. Today, we see more and more that there is a lack of respect for life. We see abuses everywhere, including with our medical professionals. There is no sanctity for life. But God, in Jeremiah 1.5, it says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee and adore and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Y'all forgive my dog. Job 33, 4 says, The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. In Psalm 139, 13 through 16, it says, For thou, thou hast possessed my reins, Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance. Yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. I'm going to pause right now um, just to add a little something to this. Those scriptures tell us that we were formed in our mother's belly by God that he knew us before we were even put in our mother's womb. How can anyone say that a fetus is not a baby, that it's not human and it's not living? When the cells grow one upon the other in this, in this womb, miraculously creating a baby. I'm going to skip over the personal note uh, you can find my devotional on the Lord is my shepherd dot dot com. If you'd like to go there and read, I have the personal note in there. Uh, but I want to go on and tell you that God's love outweighs your sin. That if you've made a decision to have an abortion in the past or you're thinking about having an abortion, God can forgive you right now. All you have to do is ask Jesus into your heart. Ask him to forgive your sins and help you to live with the decisions that you made in the past. We still have to pay for our sins in some, fa in some form or fashion upon this earth. But know that God has forgiven our sins. We all have to repent at some point. We have to ask God to forgive us. And to draw closer to him. We are a sinful people. And we need a savior. Please turn to God today. And know that his promises will never fail us. He loves you so very much. Don't let old Slewfoot have a hold on your life. Get yourself immersed in God's word. And draw near to him. Through prayer and meditation. 
get yourself into a good Bible-based church and be among other believers to help you grow. Uh, be willing to be mentored by other Christians. In closing, I want to remind you that you belong to God. He made it clear in verse 37, whom they bear unto me. We belong to God because he created us. He knew us before we were placed in our mother's womb. He formed you in your mother's belly. Yes, my friend, you were created by God. And you belong to him. Not only do you belong to God, but your children belong to God also. They're loaned to us. We only have them for a short time. Those whom you bear and bring forth into this world are God's. He only loans us our children. Folks, Satan is real. The Bible tells us he's a fallen angel. The Bible is real. It's inspired word of God that was written by many people over several centuries. Yet it is congruent in everything that's in it. Everything falls into place and it just goes step by step showing us what our sins are, what happens when we sin, and how to get out of that sin through Jesus Christ. Jesus took all our sins upon the cross. He took your sins and my sins and placed them upon his perfect body that was without sin and died for us. He took our place. He took the place of death for us that we might know God and be accepted back into God's kingdom. Not only did he die on the cross, he laid in a borrowed tomb for three days. His body was placed in a borrowed tomb. They didn't even have time to anoint his body for burial because of the Sabbath, because they were in, the Sabbath was coming and they didn't have time. So on the third day, they went to, to the tomb and they found that the stone, this big, huge stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. They thought somebody has stolen our Lord and Savior's body. Where did it go? They didn't listen when he was telling them what was going to happen. But the stories go on in the Bible, and we learn that he walked again among men. He was alive. He was very much alive. And he came to the disciples in a miraculous way. He rose straight up into heaven in front of them. These were first-hand accounts of what Jesus was doing. Friends, I want to let you know that Jesus is alive. He sits at the right hand of the Father in heaven. His kingdom will never end. and Those that believe in him will live forever in his kingdom. We may die a physical death but our spirit will return to God we want to be with God we have a God gene within us that God placed in us and no man can take away and I just want to say that you have this opportunity today to get your heart right with God to ask him to forgive your sins and to invite Jesus to live in your heart you too, my friend, can have the Holy Spirit guide you in the scriptures and the, in the interpretations of the scriptures. You will never be alone because God is with us. He is a personal, loving, and living God, and he wants you to return to him. But you have that free will, and you have a decision to make. Now, if you're already a Christian, and you're not going to church, I really want to ask you, are you doing what God wants you to do? Or are you doing what you want to go do and what Satan wants you to do? Friends, get yourself into a Bible-believing church. It's so easy. You might actually make some friends. 
you might actually learn something. I thank you for listening, and I hope that you will come back and visit our page often. We ask you to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And comment below if you've enjoyed this video, or if you just need prayer, or if you ask Jesus into your heart. We want to know. I will be praying for you. Just leave a message and let me know. God bless.